Welcome to Analyze This. My name is Honey Omundei, and joining me is my co-host... Tunji Andrews. Tunji, no gunshot today? Nah, ran out of bullets. Oh, I hate when that happens. But today yeah. we're going to be talking about a really exciting topic, and which is smart ways to make investments. So you might be working, you might be saving, you might be looking to the future. You might be thinking of your retirement or your pension, if you're like Tunji and you're getting on. And you might be looking for ways in which you can make your money work better for you. <laughs> we're going to be analyzing it on this week's episode, talking about some of the alternative um, methods to investing that money and making it work smarter, get you better returns, and uh, be with you till, you know, you're old and great. Tunji, how do you think about investing? Well, first, uh, I mean, the thought in my mind is uh, a lot of the time, we a lot of us expect to make it big, you know, right. you know, just hit that big hammer. money, you know, just hammer. But the truth about it is that real wealth is generational, is intergenerational. Right. So it, it doesn't happen in one generation. But what you can do is start building the. Does the, that apply to Nigeria though? It seems as if people. Except of course. They you, make all the money for their generation and you their know, future Except of course you do it crookedly, you know. Yeah. But, you know, we're talking about, you know, real straight principles. Yeah. And the general concept to it is you, you, you create the right uh, platform for yourself, for your family. Um, you are able to build the building blocks to which the future can also um, build upon. But um, I mean, the, the principles of uh, compound interest, um, continuous investment, continuous saving, um, always finding opportunities, investing when everybody's um, averse to investments, being adverse when everybody's investing. I mean, those are just the principles we'll be talking about on this edition of Analyze This. Yeah, I think that what's really important is sometimes I feel like in Nigeria, we have this whole spirit that we're going to do one deal or we're going to start one business and just, bam. And just blow, you know. And I know that, you know, we see it in, in, especially in the public office, you know, someone gets something, they get an appointment and all of a sudden their life changes. And then and it I, comes with plate number, glory to God. Yeah, that's a big one. Uh, area father number one, you know, or, you know, so there's that whole spirit. We have that sort of in our culture and, mm -hmm. and this whole thing of Nigerians take it quite literally like, you know, no situation is permanent or no condition so is permanent. permanent yes. So, yeah, so you might be poor today, tomorrow but tomorrow, be big, you know, you know? And, but I think that beyond thinking about like that, like we're all praying to hammer, like even me myself, but beyond that, there's ways in which you can make your money just work better for you so that you don't end up in a position where you're old and gray and you don't have anything to show for all the money that, you know, for all the work that you've done over the years. I mean, and it's, it's just a deliberate thing, right? Because, I mean, even your, you, if you have people that work around you, the artisan will say something like, I'm a, I'm a low isha. Sorry for using it, but I'm trying to explain what he means. That he says, we will have this money. And when you ask him how, what are you doing? What are the principles you're working with? Are you saving? Are you investing? No, but they just believe that one day they'll be walking on the road and then they'll kick one bag and then they'll open the bag and say, ha, dollars, and they'll happen. cover it. It doesn't happen that way, guys. It never happens that way. You so what are some of the smart ways you think when you start thinking about it? So what's your number one go-to sort of place? Is it treasure bills? Is it... Well, um, first of all, I, I see my go-to will be savings. And right. treasury bills is a, 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 basically in my mind, it's a savings, right? Because it's, uh, it's that save, safe investment, which, um, except of course, Nigeria just turns upside down, you will get your money back. Mm -hmm. But uh, the interest is not as massive as you would want to use to build wealth. You get 17, 18% per annum, which is fantastic, but it is not what is going to build you wealth, right? So you need more aggressive investments as you're younger. But the truth about it is that you need to first build some sort of war chest to be able to go out and invest. And treasury bills, um, gov uh, the FG savings bonds are the, begin uh, the starting points for you to start saving. And then maybe in two, four, five years, you can start investing in more aggressive things. So if you're looking at treasury bills, the first thing to do is start building some sort of stash, right? To start yeah. investing small, small, literally. Mm -hmm. And I think one of the key things that we've highlighted is there are really cool technology apps and websites and companies that are basically focused on helping you invest smarter, right? True. Um, I mean, we had one on uh, the show this season and, you know, they were just talking about how they help you save, how they help you plan smarter. And... Um, so basically, let's, let's just go into it. So we've talked about treasury bills, right? right. And uh, that, that obviously is one of the most important ways. What about investing in property or land? Of course, that is another. But you see, you can't go into property and land unless you have some sort of war chest. So you start at the treasury bills or the savings bond 
and you grow a bit of a war chest, and right. then you can go into those areas. But there, there are companies now as well that is really interesting. They're allowing you to probably purchase property like you know, over time, and, you know, it might well, be Well, this, this, the mortgages, right? No, I don't mean a mortgage. I mean, like, interesting companies that actually allow you, without getting a mortgage from a bank, to just pay instrumentally, which I think would be a really interesting way to start um, getting on that. Now, I have heard about those companies, but um, I also suggest that if you don't have regular cash flow, which is substantial, you might not want to do that because but there might they, be they like allow you to pay... But there people that have cash flow. Well... Big boys also watch... Well, it, it it can be very it can be very tight, and it does squeeze people because you think okay, they, they, you see those adverts, pay two million and get the key, and you pay the two million, and then you're supposed to pay maybe two million every month, and that 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 can be very. No, much. it's not that bad actually. It's quite instrumentally. I know this was. <laughs> so I was looking into it at one point. You pay like quarterly, so okay. Okay, maybe, maybe like a works. quarter. Yeah, so it's not it's not it's not so much of a you know no hassle a strain. Yeah. Um, but the good news is that it lets you get on the property ladder, even if you're just buying a small apartment or um you know a two bedroom property or a little bit plus of land in somewhere very far away. Yeah, true. <laughs> Lucky five hundred, mm -hmm. uh, but at least you get <laughs> <laughs> get in the market. To you know, you get Restart, on property ladder, yeah. and this property it always appreciates really well, mm -hmm. and so eventually you can maybe flip it or rent it out and start earning good income True. from it. True. Also, you might want to start reading about um, Bitcoin and the blockchain um, sector. Um, the the truth is that our regulators in Nigeria have not yet said we could we can use it, but I just found out today that uh, Japan licensed seven. Um, um, blockchain uh, companies and that means that countries across the world are beginning to look into cryptocurrencies and sooner or later it might get here but i'm not saying invest in it yet but you know just start reading about i think it's it a good time to really look at different cryptocurrency yeah. i was actually just on a tour with a company a guy who actually built his business around that in zimbabwe and he's mm -hmm. making a killing so mm -hmm. shout out to tawanda mm -hmm. it's it's really important to i don't understand it so yet i won't be i, I understand my money it, into it I, but I understand, I understand it. That there's different perspectives and it can yeah. really work well in 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 economies where uh, you know, the forex is largely like fluctuating, yeah, fluctuating or there's like yeah. high inflation. Because you were saying this true. story about in Zimbabwe, like if you went to the bar and you purchased beer and you went back to sit down, by the time you go back up in like 30 cents <laughs> an hour, the price that you used to buy, will, the price you used to buy one is different. So they have to buy, they'll buy six beers at once so that they don't have. So in those kind of cases, having that kind wow. of currency helps stabilize this kind of true, situation. So true. our currency fluctuation is not that bad yet, but I think it's a really, it can be a good thing for those who understand it to look at putting their money in there. What about the stock market is that the stock place? market is still a place to look at um we've seen uh, because a lot of people have been burnt right so in nigeria well the stock market okay can we explain this again okay, and i really need to say this it, again. So it is it unfair to a lot of the people that were burnt uh, do the they fail the number one principle of investing ah. and that's they did not do due diligence they did not ask about the people they were giving the money to. Sometimes they bought companies that they were they didn't know anything about, and they just put their money into it blindly. Tuji, I agree that that happens to people, but there were also people like me who put money in companies which were sold at the time and have just not performed up to either previous ex like the market performance have just really tanked. Yeah, but those no companies, those companies still so will come co back. They, they, they will you know, in some cases, eventually. some of them are gone. They've merged, or they've been, you know. There are sometimes that things happen in Nigeria to companies which I don't think you can really predict. So I think at the end of the day, we'll, they, I, I recognize that there are stable mm -hmm. investment companies that you can still put your money into. But mm -hmm. I think that a lot of people have been burnt, not necessarily by market um, volatility, but just by bad decisions being made by some companies. Yeah, well, that that is true. That is. So that... how do you, if you want to save, if you have a bit of money? Would you still advise putting it in some really strong company options or stock options? On, on the stock market, I will advise to do uh, a diversified portfolio. Right. Some stocks, be aggressive in some places, go some currency in other places, go um, property if you can, go government bonds to just kind of you know stabilize your portfolio. The general idea is to have as many stock options or, or as many investment options as possible. Okay. You can do that as you start out, but as time goes on, you start to grow from one portfolio to another. And what just, about investing in a startup or investing? That is a beautiful, a fantastic way to. But you see, also it's a the number one to, to grow your money. Right. The number one principle is do your due diligence because when a startup is at ground or level one. Mm. 
right? He's the uh, investor, the entrepreneur's valuation of his company is say maybe $1 million, right? Let's just hypothetically. And, you know, the true value of the business, maybe in 10 years time might be a hundred million or 200 million, but you've invested that 1 million uh, or that 500,000 and you've bought like 50% of the company. Right. You get. Now you find somebody with passion, somebody who you know is going somewhere, someone you believe in their dream, someone you believe in the business with, and you can, because of course you're investing in the business, you have to be, you'll be a shareholder and you'll be able to put your eyes in the day-to-day -day runnings of the business. So businesses grow. Um, Fast Bar is, was a was an idea in our head at one point. It grew to a fiscal location. It started selling. So by the time it starts doing all those things, you can start coming for your hair. My yeah, and I think that companies like rewards. mine and, and tech companies are a great place in which you can see your money grow really quickly if you invest. So people who invest in fashion maybe when we first started before we had anything compared to what the company is worth now on a fair value on a fair value basis, it's, you know, it's grown many multiples over. Mm -hmm. And I've seen that in many technology companies in Nigeria and across Africa. So I think if people are looking, it's really good to start looking at technology companies, following the space, doing your research, doing your due diligence. But I think there's great wins to be had there. So what is a good time to start investing? What's a good age? Should you do while you're young like me or while you're you know, getting on like you? <laughs> well, I, I honestly believe that um, parents should start helping their children um, start investing from the age of 10 or maybe even earlier but from when they start to understand the value of money uh, helping them to understand that you should put some little aside in your uh, piggy bank uh, what we call the colo in this part and then you move on from that to have um, I mean when when maybe they're, they're 12 13 they can have a proper savings account um, but they can have savings accounts from like a small age. Like the five, idea is, the idea is account. taking it away from them at, at, at first kind of, you know, removes the responsibility from their mind because they don't see the money anymore. Having that piggy bank helps them first start, only start visualizing, the visualizing the idea of the of fact savings. that I have this money. It's, I've kept it somewhere. It is there. So when you now take it to a different location, the, that you know, interaction is already there. Then as they now grow into their 20s, you can start introducing them to things like uh, savings bonds and helping them understand investments and things like that. Generally, the idea is to help them understand the principle of money and how to make it. While you're at it, also try and get out, uh, pick out an insurance um, insurance uh, package, insurance uh, um, portfolio also, because one of the best ways to save for the future is also to prepare for whatever might happen, health right. challenges, the fact that you might not be able to earn anymore. Yeah. Um, also, in the case that you are out of the picture, people, your loved ones are still being taken Covered, care of. Yeah. So, I mean, that's another part. A lot of us tend to worry, you know, I don't have enough money, should I do it? Well, we will say we pray a lot. So yeah, well. but, but if you look at the opportunity cost, when it does happen, the kind of um, what you are open up to, you know, the, the, basically the, the elements as, as it is, you'll you realize that it's easy to put aside a little for your insurance packages too. Yeah, and I think that insurance always gets bad flack. Um, yeah. Um, and it's true. boring and we don't always understand it. But I think it's really worthwhile looking into it, especially like life insurance policies. Mm -hmm. And there's smart almost insurance and sort of investment policies that you can also invest in that will give you a certain amount back if true, you don't claim. True, and I true. think especially if, you know, people who are starting families and starting to have kids, putting an educational plan in place so that your kids are always protected regardless of if you have a job, if you keep a job, or if you're not around. So I think that we as millennials and all these things, I really feel like I'm advising myself <laughs> because, because I'm not necessarily true. doing everything that I should be doing, but I think that it's a good idea that we put it out there so that people can start to look these mm -hmm. things up mm -hmm. and really take them seriously. I don't think that you have to wait till you're 50 or 60 to start thinking about insurance. You should start planning for your retirement. You should start planning for, you know, your golden era. You should start planning for your kids and really investing in your future today. And, and the thing that insurance companies use, which is for the savings accounts, is the principle of compounding interest, which is basically what every investor needs to know. Mm -hmm. So you save 10 naira, right? And the interest on that 10 naira is 1 naira, mm -hmm. right? And at the end of the year, you get 1 naira and it's 11 naira. The next year, the 10% is going to be on 11 naira, not 10 naira anymore. Right. So, and that is how your wealth grows because the interest continues to grow upon the new um, uh, bulk sum that is there. And basically, that's how your insurance uh, packages grow. And they also have some investments on the side. But that is how you also can grow your small portfolio, you know, yeah. just be putting a little bit on, on top of it. 
line upon line, precept upon precept, and it grows. And I think just to sort of wrap it up, I think when people start thinking about making investments and really trying to grow their money, one of the th questions that I always get asked is, should I be doing it myself or should I be reaching out and trying to find a financial advisor yeah. to mm -hmm. help me? And, and, and my thing is really like, first of all, you want to do your own research. You want Boom. to... Un <laughs> you must understand because... How do you know the guy is telling you the truth? Exactly. So yeah. do your own research for sure. Understand whatever instrument or whatever type of savings or investment that you're trying to get into. Even if you're going to seek the additional help and investment advisor to help you complete the deal. So for example, when I'm buying stocks, I've maybe done my own research. On the company. On the company, on how they market, perform over time, yeah. on the market. I've already maybe even selected the stock, mm -hmm. right? So I'm now just calling a broker or an insurance advisor to be able to buy it and be able to make sure that... Um, that it's done correctly, mm -hmm. and then I'm following up to make sure that all of that has been done. There are also cases where I might be asking for advice, um, but ultimately I recognize that since it's my money, it's my decision. Exactly, at I, the end of the day. So I don't really advise getting a financial advisor and giving them the money wholesale and and, and sort of trusting wholeheartedly that, that people will, will do them yeah, correctly. Yeah. Because they're human. Sometimes they also make mistakes. So let's take it to the streets. Are you guys investing? Are you even thinking about saving? Um, are you putting your money into anything? Are you investing in your business? Piggyback. Exactly. So what are you doing? I, I'm sure we'll hear a lot of Isusu, but let's go to the streets. I think shares is uh, preferable to me for now. Yeah. I can always monitor my, uh, my what's it called? My shares in the, whichever company or firm I, you know, I propose. No, I mean to you, so I think that's better for me. Like uh, buying of shares, maybe like investing in a housing business. Uh, stock is the best way to go for now. The way the country is going for now. So, Tunji, how much are you investing? Well, um, there, there are certain things, right? Um, before, I mean, it's the place I am right now. So, um, before I got married, I was a bit very bullish in terms of things I was investing in. Now it's more focused around, you know, preparing for the future for my kids, you know, making sure that if I'm not around. So it's, it's more about, you know, safeguarding the future as against aggressive investment. So those are more, um, what would I call so it So you now? don't want to tell me how much your whole portfolio is worth? No. Billions? Mm. Millions of dollars? No, we don't have... Trillion of dollars. Moving on. So, um, at, the, at this place, I'm preparing for the future. So, I'm doing things like education savings plans, life insurance, you know, things that generally will be focused on making sure that the future is in a, in a straight trajectory. Now, when, once I'm able to grow past that, then maybe I could do a bit more investment on the side. But right now, we're still trying to keep a tight ship as we grow further. Yeah, I'm... You know, that sounds very much like big boy thing. And I'm really happy that like one half of us is like super responsible with all of that. I'm still like <laughs> a lot of the viewer side where I'm still starting out. I'm basically like using, um, I'm using one of these companies actually like Cody Money just to save money and, and trying to be really disciplined with using like an automatic savings plan. So it deducts the money, the money is safe. And, you know, that's from there I'm hoping to build a stash that I can use to buy, <laughs> maybe buy my own property in front of the island someday. It's probably at this stage going to be like a little piece of land in Lekki 5 million and one. But um, at least I'm getting started, which I think is a great point. The this truth is, about it is that just start. It, it doesn't matter where you start from. Just start. You start like start. me. Yeah, yeah if just you're start. Not gonna be. But listen, guys, I would love to hear from you. How are you guys thinking about investing, making your money work for you, making your money grow? You know, we all need to have, we need to have more money for our future, for our, you know, for our golden era, as I like to call it. I would love to hear from you. The hashtag to use is analyze this and the handle to use is at Indani TV. So you can reach out to me at Honey Ogundeyi on Snapchat, YouTube, Facebook, you know, basically every social media platform. And Mr. Also, Andrews. you can reach out to me on uh, Twitter, Facebook, as you said, every um, social media platform, Tunji Andrews. Great, guys. Till next time. Have a great week.